Number 32, a professional application. A woodpecker's brain is specially protected from large decelerations by tendon-like attachments inside the skull. While pecking on a tree, the woodpecker's head comes to a stop uh, from an initial velocity of 0.6 meters per second in only a distance of 2 millimeters. Find the acceleration in meters per second squared and in multiples of g. Okay, so let's have a quick sketch. So here is, I guess, the woodpecker's head. All right, and it's moving at some initial velocity. I'll say it's moving to the right. Okay, it's going to be pecking uh, a tree, I guess. And it says that the initial velocity here of the head at the beginning is going to be a value of a 0 0.600 meters per second, right? And it comes to then a stop, right? So it's going to stop at the end here. So the final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. And it goes from this velocity of 0.6 to 0 in a distance, as it mentioned, of 2 millimeters. So this distance here is going to be 2.00 millimeters. Great, and that would be my x value. Okay, so now it says find the acceleration. So we're looking then for um, a, right? So what I want to do is I need to now think about one of the equations of uh, kinematics. And I'm thinking about do I know a relationship between the displacement, the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the acceleration. And we do, right? If we use this equation, the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement, blah, that will give us, right, the acceleration by knowing these three variables. Okay, great, so we have that. All right. Um, now, the only thing though I realize is that here in my velocity, I have meters and meters, and they gave me the distance in millimeters. So no good, I have to do a conversion. I want to convert my millimeter value into meters. So let's do that on the right-hand side over here. So we've got 2.00 millimeters. I'm gonna put millimeters on the bottom, meters on the top. And I know that for every one meter, there's a thousand millimeters. So that cancels, right? So now the value will be, so just plug it into the calculator. It should work out to be a value of 0 0.00200 m. Okay, I still have to have three significant figures. All right, so now this is the, um, not new distance, but that's the distance value I'm going to use. So let me just write that above here. Uh, X will equal 0 0.00200 m. Okay, now let's plug in everything into our formula. So the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is 0 0.600, and that's squared. And now that's going to be plus 2 times my acceleration, which is what I'm trying to solve for, times the displacement, which was 0 0.00200. Okay, now let's uh, calculate. So let's do some math. So 0 squared is 0. 0 0.600 squared is going to be 0 0.360. i got to have three significant figures there. And then doing the multiplication 2 times 0 0.002 should be 0 0.00400a. Now let's subtract this value on over. Okay, minus, oop, minus 0 0.00400a. That cancels. Now I'm left with negative 0 0.00400a is equal to 0 0.360. And now divide out the negative 0 0.00400 on from both sides. And now that leaves me with an A value of, take out the calculator, 0.36 divided by 0 0.004. And it works out to about 90. And this is negative, right? Don't forget that negative sign. And this will work out to a value of negative 90. Um, and I have to have, again, I have to have uh, three significant figures here. So negative 90.0 meters per second squared. Okay, great. So that is my answer for... Uh, part A in terms of the acceleration. It should be negative. The reason why is because if the bird's um, head is moving to the right, but it's slowing down, there must be an opposing force in the other direction that has an acceleration. And we know uh, ac I, accelerations that move in the left-hand direction are negative. All right. So 
that takes care of that. And now uh, it also asks us to calculate this in multiples of g. So let me do this over here on the right hand side. So just remember this formula that g is equal to a over 9.80. The only thing you have to remember is that the units of a must be meters per second squared in order to use this, uh, which they are, is that's how I solve for it. So g will then be equal to negative 90.0 over 9.80. And now my value will be, just divide out the 9.8. So that comes out to uh, negative 9.18 G. Okay, so that would be the value in G. All right, so part A is finished. Let's take a look at part B. So it's, now it says calculate the stopping time. All right, so now what it wants me to do back to my picture, it wants me to calculate the time that it took in order for the bird to... Uh, have its head go from this velocity to zero. Okay, so again, I'm gonna think of a formula that relates my givens, right? So I'm, I'm gonna be looking for um, a formula that relates initial velocity, final velocity, uh, time, and displacement, okay? So um, what do we, what should we use, right? Well, this formula may come to mind that the change in displacement is equal to one half times the initial velocity plus the final velocity multiplied by time. All right, you could have chosen other equations, by the way, but you would have you had to have used the acceleration, okay? The only problem with that is that if you calculated your acceleration wrong and then you used a formula that involves that acceleration, now you're doubly wrong, all right? So just try to avoid that. I could still make a mistake in copying my information from the problem, but it's less likely, all right? So remember, you're doing this to do well on a test. So minimize the chance for error so you can do better on the test. All right, so my change in displacement, they said was going to be 0 0.00200, I'm using that in meters, is equal to one half multiplied by the initial velocity, which they said was 0 0.600. My final velocity was zero, and now I wanna solve for the time. So just some simple math here. Let's just rewrite that. So half of 0.6, right, should be 0 0.300 0, 0, times t. It looks like a weird t. Okay, and then divide out the 0 0.300. 0. Great, and that's going to give me now my time. So 0 0.002 divided by 0.3. And it comes out to, and I'm gonna convert this into scientific notation, this should be now 6.67 times, times 10 to the minus two, three, it looks like. And that is in seconds, all right? So I need three significant figures there again because I divided these values with three significant figures. All right, so that takes care of uh, B. So now, last but not least, let's take a look at letter uh, C. So it says the tendons cradling the brain stretch, making its stopping distance point, uh, excuse me, 4.5 millimeters greater than the head and hence, less deceleration of the brain. So what is the brain's deceleration expressed in, what is the brain's deceleration and uh, expressed in multiples of G? Okay, so it, honestly, the wording of this question is a little odd. Greater than the head, I don't quite understand um, how exactly they're meaning, how exactly they're telling me this distance, all right? So I'm gonna make one assumption that basically, the new stopping or the new distance in the problem from the head. So go, let's take a look back at the picture. So from the head, now it's going to travel out to here, let's say. Okay, so this distance now that was covered, the displacement value is now going to be uh, 4.5 millimeters. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna convert that right to meters, 0 0.00450, okay? The other way to have interpreted that may have been to say, well, uh, it's gonna be an additional uh, 4.5 millimeters from the end point of the first problem. That's possible, but that, I, that just sounds a little crazier to me. Um, but again, it might just be my interpretation or maybe my brain is a little fried at the, at the, at the moment. But in any case, assuming that this is how they're, how they're meaning uh, for me to interpret the distance. Um, I will be correct, though, in my calculations moving forward uh, by using this particular uh, displacement. Okay, 
So now, again, they want us to calculate the deceleration. So basically now, um, I'm going to be using the same formula as I did in letter A. Right, so A, A's work was here in red. All right, so now let me actually do all the work here for letter C in black. So I'm going to just box in that displacement. So I'll put letter C on down here in black. Okay, so we're basically using the same formula. So the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 multiplied by the acceleration um, multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity is still zero because the head is still coming to a stop. The initial velocity is still the same, so 0 0.600 zero zero squared. Plus then two multiplied by the acceleration, which is what we're trying to find. And now the displacement is the value that changes. So this is 0 0.00450. That's the value that changes when you go back to part A. That other value in terms of the displacement was 0 0.002. So now we made it a little longer. So obviously the acceleration should go down, right? So let's make sure that it does. So now just doing some math here, right? 0.6 squared is going to be the same, 0 0.360. Plus then 2 times the value of 0 0.0045 should be 0 0.00900. A. Reorganizing this equation now, it should work out to be negative, right? Because I'm going to move this to the other side of the equation. All right, so it should be now negative 0.00900A, and that's equal to 0 0.360. Okay, I don't know why I just noticed I wrote in the squared sign over here. It's not squared anymore, I'm just going to erase that. So um, now what we can do is simply divide out the negative 0 0.00900 from both sides 0 0.00900. And let's take that and put it into the calculator. So 0.36 divided by 0 0.009 works out to now be 40, negative 40 that is, negative 40 meters per second squared. Okay, and that is what I anticipated should happen. Look, when the distance was shorter, the acceleration was negative 90. Now when, I, when the distance was lengthened, essentially as a result of these tendons that are able to stretch, we more than decreased uh, the acceleration by half. So that's a good thing. Now it just wanted us to finish this out in terms of g. So remember g is equal to a over 9.80. So g will equal negative 40. And I technically should have, uh, this should be point. And let me just make sure I'm technically correct here. Let me just erase this a little bit. And this should be 40.0 because I need three significant figures, all right? So this is over 9.8. And finally now, man, this problem's a long one, huh? So negative 40 divided by 9.8 is gonna be negative, negative 4.08 G. Okay, that takes care of that. Guys, thanks for tuning in, hope this helped. And if it did, please remember to subscribe. Thank you.